各位观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收看《J 与 J 论坛》，由我 Jimmy 妈妈见，有我们的好朋友 Jim Nowhere 为我们一起讨论这个礼拜的时事。Jim, what a week, what a month, what a month. Yeah, yeah. If you if you think it's a challenging week for us here, just imagine living in Ukraine. Absolutely, or, or being affected、uh, yeah. in the Eastern Europe period.、Um, you know, this last four weeks has been information overload. Every week we run out of time. But you have very deep insight on the situation, not just of what the media feeds us, but what is the true implications worldwide of this war that most of us, most Americans, cannot see or are not allowed to see.、Okay. Um, could you could you tell us a little bit of what what is what have you seen now? Four weeks now. Now it's four, four weeks. weeks Where do we go from here? And and now there's there's some pattern. Well, I, I I'm beginning to see some patterns emerging and. Jimmy, as bad as the situation has been over the last few weeks,、um, obviously for us,、uh, we're half a world away, a third of the world away. As bad as it's been for us,、uh, again, imagine living in Ukraine, and as horrific as what they are enduring is,、um, and as bad as the behavior of Russia is. Uh, in many many dimensions, which I'll get into in a moment, I'm beginning to see the signs of a great deal of hope. In other words, this terrible storm cloud has some silver linings to it that I think is going to redefine the world in ways that few of us ever expected. Much like the pandemic has defined many aspects of our culture in, in the United States and probably around the world. In many ways that we didn't expect when the pandemic first hit,、um, everything from working at home to taking better care of our public health, all of those kinds of things,、um, to holding a government accountable for what it does and what it doesn't do, etc. I think we have all learned a great、uh, through the pandemic. I think we've learned a great deal about ourselves and our government.、Uh, some of it attractive, much of it is unattractive, and it's a wake up call that we need to change. I think the war in Ukraine is a very similar、uh, flashpoint, larger, and、um, and I think more extreme than the pandemic, if you can believe that. But but let me mention,、uh, I'm going to go back and forth、uh, in explaining my observations from winners to losers, winners to losers. The first winner. And I think the overwhelming message that I think everybody knows、um, is the winner in this whole effort is Ukraine.、Um, yes, it is going to lose a great number of its people, and yes, it is going to see its beautiful cities turn to rubble. But it is going to emerge much stronger and send a message to the rest of the world about how able. Bravery and skill are at turning back、um, adverse efforts by others, and in this case, it's been military. But I think the messages、uh, resound economically, culturally, everything else.、Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the hero of not just this year but the whole、um, decade is Mr. Zelensky. His leadership has proven world class in so many ways. I, I'm repeating what I think everyone knows, so let me keep going.、Mm -hmm. The obvious loser in this is Russia. Russia overplayed its hand.、Um, it has demonstrated that its military is a paper tiger. It has made huge mistakes、um, by overplaying. Uh, by not following through,、um, not just in the field of battle, but preparing for the battle,、um, its military leaders have been defecting, its soldiers have been defecting. It has been telling untruths, bald lies to its own population, has been restricting things,、um, and the consequences are already being felt deeply.、Um, An example that everybody's heard is the ruble has lost half its value. That is affecting、um, people in Russia, not just the soldiers.、Um, and one of the things that Ukrainians are doing is, as they capture Russian soldiers, they are contacting 
the families of the Russian soldiers and letting them know what is going on. They are communicating in Russia in ways that the Russian government will not. That is a huge message which will create huge discontent. The next winner, I believe, is the West. Uh, ironically, Putin has, has unified every member of NATO and not only unified Europe, but unified Europe with the United States. It has demonstrated the strength of unity and it has demonstrated the need for leadership and belatedly and clumsily, it has demonstrated the wisdom and leadership of the United States. Um, many, many, many implications of all of this. Uh, and it's absolutely wonderful. And there are many lessons to be learned. The next loser has been Mr. Putin himself. My own view is that he will not last uh, in Russia. Uh, and I don't think any foreign power like Lindsey Graham has been advocating for someone to assassinate him. My own view is I don't think that will be necessary. I think they will take care of things in Russian style. Uh, but in the, uh, in the off chance that he does personally survive, um, his prestige is forever blown on the world stage and domestically within Russia. Russia as an economy and as a long time culture cannot survive this. The only way that Russian citizens can regain what they were accustomed to in terms of Western goods, Western lifestyle, is to join the West. And in joining the West, that will mean another defeat for Mr. Putin. Um, these, I believe these situations are already in place. And if you don't believe that yet, just look at these statistics. The, um, statistics that have come out earlier this week. It's estimated that the, the Ukrainian army has probably lost, the military forces have probably lost two to 4,000 people, uh, soldiers, etc. That doesn't count the civilian deaths, of course. No one knows how big that number is. But the Russian army is lost somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10,000. Those are huge numbers by any kind of comparison. And when the realization of that loss becomes known throughout the wide body of the Western, uh, of, of the Western European, uh, Western Russian population, um, it, will, it will stymie Mr. P uh, Mr. Putin. But he is no longer a bully. And his total image of the vaunted Russian army and his strength has been totally blown. The next winner, and this is obvious too, is the United States and belatedly and clumsily um, the leadership that we have shown. Um, Interesting. I think, I think the world is now saying we need the United States. It's very clear that the Western, uh, Western European countries that are a member of NATO can't do this alone. Every NATO move to support Ukraine depends not only on U.S. approval, but U.S. leadership strategically and tactically to make it happen. Yes, the big winner on the ground, as I mentioned before, was the Ukrainian people. But the quiet winner, the overwhelming winner, is the United States financial system. Think of this for a moment. Think of the countries of Europe as the skeleton of the free world. Then think of international commerce, the businesses and trade that make it happen as the muscles of the free world. What is the United States financial system? It is the nerve system that makes the skeleton and the muscles move. That's what's going on right now. And a lot of people don't realize some of the implications of the impact of these concessions. We talk about the concessions, but early on in the imposition, two weeks ago, 
uh, of the concessions, we left out, intentionally left out the energy business. In the last week, since we've imposed the energy business, dramatic changes have occurred. And those changes are going to be ever stronger. And they have, and I'll, I'll get into something else in a moment. But the other, the other piece of the, uh, fin uh, the financial sanctions is people talk about uh, sanctioning Russian exports of energy, of even vodka. But what they don't think of is all the implications of it. For instance, if we still bought Russian uh, oil, how would we pay for it? You would pay for it with a transfer of dollars into a Russian bank account. How could the Russians tap the bank account to actually get the cash? How could they convert it? They can't with all, this, with all the sanctions that have been imposed. Um, the same thing with Russian imports. They're talking about Aeroflot not being able to fly anymore, even domestic flights. Why? Because they can't get Western parts um, from either of the airlines from, from um, Boeing or the European manufacturers. Okay? It's only a matter of a very short amount of time. And literally all the chain retailers from McDonald's to Prada have left everywhere. If you're a Russian citizen that is accustomed to using the internet, financial transactions, anything having to do with electronic communication, that's over. You're going back in lifestyle 20 to 30 years, and they don't like that. And there's no reason for it. So at any rate, that then brings me to what's the next, if the winner is the United States and U.S.-led Western culture, what's the loser? The woke culture. Things like energy denial um, and the Green New Deal focused on climate change, that's off the table for the time being. Most everyone has now realized if you don't kick into motion your responsibilities economically to build your defense capability, none of the rest matters. I think people throughout Western Europe and a lot of the United States took our uh, national security and international economic strength for granted. I think people have belatedly come to realize that needs to be defended and reinforced all day, every day. And it needs to be done ethic, ethically and transparently according to the standards and by the rule of law that we believe. One of the things that Russia has been exposed for is its fake news, its inappropriate communication tactics. Many of the conscripts in Ukraine that have been captured have been told they were going on training missions. They had no idea they were going into battle. Can you imagine doing that to someone? Drafting them, telling them something else, not training them, and then putting them into battle? The Russian people won't stand for that. One of the things that you were quite kind in your, in your introduction uh, about my international experience, yes, there are different cultures around the world. Anybody who's traveled abroad understands that. But fundamentally, most human beings have the same human desires, family, security, prosperity, wanting a better life. Um, those are worldwide and wanting to trust each other and trust the leadership. One of the reasons I believe the Russian military has performed so poorly is they don't have the same sent sentiment of patriotism and commitment that certainly we in the United States have been accustomed to, how we won World War I, World War II. Um, you can argue whether we lost that during Vietnam and the two uh, Middle Eastern wars in Afghanistan and, and Iraq. And I happen to believe we've eroded what we once had. But nobody that fights for Russia has that same kind of commitment that we do. And so what is Russia doing now? They're importing mercenary soldiers from the Middle East 
because they know that some of those ISIS fighters can fight without having any conscience uh, or any long-term objective. So um, the next the next winner, I believe, is our Western culture, and I believe that is going to continue and can talk. And you've been very patient to me. Um, the part that I haven't mentioned yet is what is going on in China and how does China fare in this? And I know that's a burning question on most of our viewers and listeners' minds. I think China is having a dramatic wake-up call on this. China's economy is far larger than Russia's, probably at least 10 times, maybe 15 or 20 times the size of Russia's economy. And it is far more, more. far more integrated into the world. In other words, if Russia is smarting from the imposition of sanctions, imagine how China would behave uh, and be a and suffer from similar kinds of sanctions. And you're seeing China trying to prepare for some of this right now by dealing with Saudi Arabia, with oil trading, maybe having the trades being denominated in yuan or MNB instead of um, instead of dollars. Uh, but the other thing is China trades significantly with Western Europe as much as it trades with the United States. And that trading relationship is extremely valuable as well. In other words, I think we are, and, and if Russia falls, China's prestige is hurt very badly having uh, backed uh, Russia. We're, we're uh, speaking as if, I, 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 I can see that inside, but I, 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 you know, I'm obligated to have obviously a different view or else no one will watch the show. We just agree on everything. Mm -hmm. I agree with some of it, but on this particular, this, this particular discussion, I, I, I'm actually completely opposite. I think that China, I mean, Russia is not the loser. I mean, we're speaking as if Russians lost the war. We're well, speaking. I think, I think it's, Jimmy, I think it's only a matter of time and, and I may be proven wrong, but Boy, all the signs, every week we get together and every week um, Russia fares a little bit worse, a little bit worse. It may win the war. It may occupy a bunch of rubble. Lose the battle. It may win the war, but lose the battle. Or win but the it, battle, lose the war. Win the it, battle, lose the war. And it will lose the peace. It, it, doesn't have, it doesn't have the economic strength to occupy on a long-term basis no, uh, they do not. I don't think they were planning to do that. But you no, know, I don't think they were planning to do it. But if they win it, it's like the dog who chased the car. Okay, now you got it. What are you going to do with it? Um, and why is it beneficial to them? What 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 does what does occupying a destroyed Ukraine do for Russia? Not have their backyard being part of NATO with missile defense that goes directly into their borders, with no more buffer zone to protect their, you know, whatever their, you see, when we look at everything with only our perspective, with the Western perspective, we have to try to sit, understand what the Middle East, what they're thinking, what Russia is thinking, what China is thinking. Because before is, you know, we have the biggest guns, we have the most money. I mean, all this talk of democracy, freedom, being the, being the world peace, no, come on. I mean, reality is about profit. It's about, it's about our ideology and our perspective. I mean, I'll be fair. This is good for us. It's good for my kids. It's good for my business. But do we? am I really going to sit here and, and carry on this facade as if we're the savior? No. First of all, China didn't win anything. This actually emboldens China. Oh, Putin could do whatever he wants to Russia, to, to Ukraine, and we didn't do anything. Second, China doesn't want Ukraine to go in war because Ukraine has been selling... U.S. technology and weapons to China for a long yeah. time. These are yeah. facts. China yeah. wants, and, and, then, and then the worst part is everything you said about economic sanctions, how, how much the European Union is a huge trading partner with the, uh, China. Russia only accomplishes less than 5% of China's exports. United States, is, United States and EU compasses the other 90. Yeah. So in the other way around, why would anybody sanction China? Because it would also cripple ourselves. We could sanction Russia all day long. We don't use our oil. We barely use our oil. We do no business with them. They're a tiny little economy. Their stock market is tiny. This is why we can do this. 
Mm-hmm. But in China, we cannot. Neither would Euro- European Union. They will not. And China also don't want them. They, they don't want to get. No, this. no. I think I think I, I think I think you're right, Jimmy. China doesn't want this at all. They are barely getting out of their freaking cultural revolution. I mean, they they were set back, set back fifty years. Yeah. After World War II, they're set back fifty years by Mao. Right. They barely got out. They are trying to feed their people. They also, like you said from the very beginning of the show, human beings' basic desires to have peace, to raise a family. Yeah, it's really good. You know, it's just a, try to have some creature comfort. That's it. Why would we assume that the Chinese people don't want that or the Russian people don't want that? Obviously, the Russian people want that, but their leadership, you know, I mean, what could you do? But we were lucky to be born in this country and, and we won the gene lottery, or, or, you know, to be here, to, to, to be able to say whatever we want and, and not have a leader go to war. And then secondly, there's so many things you said that I cannot agree on that it added prestige or added credibility to our administration. I think whoever is in charge right now is, 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 is a disgrace, is a shame. What, what are we doing here? We're, we're playing the same game we've always played, playing politics, using his, Mr. Biden's experience in foreign affairs. Oh, no, no. He's what so, um, he's so what has, No, what has he done? <laughs> you're, you're sacrificing lives, children, women, and the credibility that the United States have built. By playing these games, I, mean, I, I get it. We've always done no, that. No, I, I, well, I don't think anybody's played any games. But all the things I said about the virtues of the winners and lo- the winners relative to the losers, and what, what, how America, the United States, is coming out the winner. Imagine if we had played the game, and I don't like using the word game. Excuse me, had played the situation more skillfully, more deliberately, and earlier the results would have been even much better. We have been late helping out just like we were late in World War I and World War II. And there was a cost, a huge cost in human lives by the delays. And, you know, I, we, we've, nobody's gonna sit here and pretend that we wanna sacrifice our children into somebody else's war in order to maintain our leadership and economic power and and to have a say and maintaining our sovereignty and expanding our influence. Every country is, there's only certain amount of natural resources in this world. There's only, you know, every country is a race to the top. There is no second place. Um, whatever ideology we carry, we cannot just put it on other cultures and people. Being someone that travels a lot, like yourself, that understands other cultures, we have to respect them and not impose our will and mm-hmm. think that what we are doing is right for you. I do not, and I no longer want to, look, Zelensky and Putin, whatever faults Zelensky has, because he did put their, his country in here naively, he believed the West. And now he's begging every day, every other week on national TV, begging for help, calling us out. It is his fault, but he did stay and he did fight. So if you want to say that he's a hero, I like the guy. But do I think he's naive and inexperienced? Yes, because he led his country to this. He could have been like Finland and played both sides. He could be like Korea or Singapore to maintain this peace because he knows he's a smaller country. You cannot fight, poke, provoke the bear and fight the bully when, when another bully is trying to provoke you, instigate a gaslight, and then you become, you want to play victim when you, when you, you play the game. You play wrong and you lost. You're sacrificing your people's life. As a leader, your first, your first goal should be protecting your people and maintaining the sovereignty. He lost both. Poon, you say he's a loser? I don't think so. Because sanctions doesn't hurt him. It, hang, it hurts us, the oligarchs. You know, we're now, the United States just came out this morning with a $5 million bounty if we could provide information on freezing uh, Russian oligarchs' assets or yachts. Or, so what? I mean, if we're successful, why are we coming out with $5 million bounty? My point is, it doesn't hurt him. It never has. Since 2014 Crimea, he knows, he knows what he can get away with. And China does not want to play this game. And they're trying to stay in the middle, which is what Ukraine should have done, like what, what Finland would have, what Finland has done. So right now, to me, it's too early to talk about winner or loser. I just know that everyone loses when there's bloodshed. The market is, I mean, look at our market. I, 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 I deal with numbers. I, even my, per, I have to take away my personal feelings and beliefs and conviction because the numbers, I have to trust the numbers. The market has rebounded today. It's rebounded this entire week. 
or about 5%, uh, oil prices are coming down. So whatever, whatever, everything that you said, there's of course a lot of truth to it. Just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean that you're wrong. However, maybe that's why it reflects in the market, you know, it's recovering already. But remember that we have inflation fears. We have this two year pandemic. Yeah. Now. The, the war is exacerbating our inflation. The war, but, exactly. But, but, but the war did not create our inflation. No, it did exactly. It did not. We, no, 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 no. It's been we, artificially suppressed for so long by our fiscal we, policy. We, we screwed that one up all on our own. <laughs> because every administration wants to kick the can down the road. Every person wants to be reelected and wants to look good. Right. Right. And then the next three generations. Jim, I'll be long dead. It's my kids, my grandkids that will be suffering. 30, 40, 50 down the road. Down the road. Either we're living with, with where China is, is the number one country or Russia, whatever country it is. Right. But, but that, why did we not see that now? Because we got here today by doing this. Why is it suddenly we think that we could do this and maintain this? Why would we go away from this knowing that it just, well, you know what? It's not just us. Every country is doing that. I really hope that you are right. I pray for my children and my country and myself that you are right, that we do come out the winner, that it is beneficial to us, and that Putin is a loser, and, and that China will, will learn a lesson. I really hope so, um, because it, it, that would be good. That would be good for us, you know, for selfish reasons. Do I think? Do I think it was possible? I don't, but I really do hope so. But but there's not there's I cannot disagree with you because I cannot come out. The numbers doesn't lie. I, I always say we use numbers. And, you know, there's something else that we failed to mention that you had told me earlier that you believe that we are not seeing uh, the actual implications of the war and also the economic outlook because our media chooses to show us. You mentioned it earlier. That's important. You said it also shows us Russia's uh, propaganda campaign, you know, their way to influence elections and how they use fake news to advantage. Mm -hmm. You know how hard it is now to differentiate between real news and fake news is really hard because it's not just the Russian side. Ukraine's government, Ukrainian government also are sending out crazy things and I don't blame them. Um, I don't know if we are or not because you know the good thing about us is we have so many media outlets and and no, th there's no censor. No one's gonna censor you. No one's gonna listen to some government censor. You know, but in other countries they can. And then I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, four weeks, people have been telling me this. This uh, Azov Azov uh, Azov Azov regimen. This neo-Nazi white supremacy uh, group. That is this is real. It's official. I thought it was fake news for a long time. Uh, is condemned by the UN and by the United States uh, Human Rights Panel. These are on record. We condemn them. Yet they're there. They are doing ec ethnic cleansing. They are doing hail Hitlers. Um, do I say that's a small part of Ukraine's issues? Yeah, yeah. But they are part of the National Guard. They were annexed, and they have committed war crimes because we are the ones that condemn them. So it's hard for me to come back and say, oh. There's a small problem because we already condemned them. We already said that's a problem. So what Putin said is true then. He is protecting people from ethnic cleansing, that there is this fascist view coming up. Either way, you see what I mean? All this information, Jim? Well, I, I, you know, it depends on who they are. I mean, I have no idea. This is the first I've heard about that, uh, but. Oh, yeah. Oh, we don't, we don't, we're, we're not allowed to see these things, Jim. You no, see, this is that. You, are they you know, Ukrainian Russian sympathizers in Ukraine? Oh uh, no, they're Ukrainians. They're they're neo-Nazi Ukrainians oh, that okay. wants to drive out Russians and national pride. And you, you know, we say that Zelensky is of Jewish descent. So how could it be? Well, he doesn't. That doesn't mean that there's no different voices and fracture. Ukraine was a democracy, right? It's a free country. Of course, it'll be different. We have neo-Nazis. We have neo Nazis and we stormed the capital who are neo Nazis. Yeah. So you want, we want to talk about different voices, but does that take away the fact that these folks did commit crimes and that gives another country a reason to do this and that? Listen, we're the old, United States, we're the only ones to determine who's a war fighter. We're, mm. We've done that for, for, since World War II because we control it. Mm -hmm. How many people have we killed in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Vietnam, Korea, Yemen, Somalia? How many innocents have we killed? Oh, I know. It's. So, 
Who's yeah. the war criminal? Who do, what do we say to that? So well, you see what I mean? The perspective, Jim. We well, have to. I, I understand that. I understand that perfectly. And uh, I'm very sorry for those chapters in American history because they represent no. everything that that we have not been talking about today. In I'm not sorry about that because I understand yeah. that for our leaders, for foreign policy wise, is beneficial for the country. But don't do it and turn around and, and have double standard. We could do it. Y'all can't. You guys are working on us, but we're doing the exact same thing. But when it turn around, we twist it and manipulate and gaslight. That is not right. Holier than though, I can't stand that. I can't stand it. Look, just admit that every country is doing what they can for their country's benefit. Every sovereign state has right. the right to do that. Right. And if it leads to war, and if it leads to, we will try to avoid it because we went through, I, I'm a study, you're a historian, so am I. We know what happens during wartime. It's very, very hard. I mean, you cannot get in, what, lives lost, you cannot get that back, bloodshed. But mm -hmm. in the end, does it justify the mean? I, I'm not going to make comments on that. But for Poon, he has to do this. Because if he doesn't, he's done anyway. And, and let me put, put it this way. I said it again last week, Jim. Today, the Russians did not come to Canada or Mexico or Cuba to put up missiles. They didn't come to ask Mexico to join the Russian Federation or to join their socialist movement. We did. We went to Ukraine and asked them to join NATO. We told them that we'll protect you. We did it. They didn't come to do this to us because the Russians did. We will attack Mexico. And the entire country was supported. Because you cannot come to my backyard and set up missiles or, or, or manipulate them to join our enemy. You cannot. Just like the missile, the Cuban missile crisis during President Kennedy. The Russians came and we declared war, almost nuclear disaster, and they withdrew. Pune is doing the exact same thing Kennedy did, the exact same thing. But yet, he's the criminal. Because we went to his backyard, he didn't come to ours. Either way, you see a dictator, absolutely. I wish him that, I hope he's, I hope he's done. I hope Russia has a new leader and they could go toward this westernization. But from his perspective, from him, his country, there's a big part of his country that, that's a priest. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to say about Jim, I'm not asking you to agree. I'm saying from their perspective. No, no. It, it's, it's very complicated and everything is so intertwined. Just take a look at everything we're talking about and now bring Iran into the equation. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. OK. And here we are. Here we are sanctioning Russia uh, because wow. of here in Ukraine. But now because certain elements of the U.S., not me, want to make another deal with uh, Iran, we're bringing Russia in as a mediator and are paying them for doing so. Uh, it is it is just beyond belief. You see what I mean? This game they're playing, it is a game. Somebody is profiting from it financially. Well, and the, the, the lives that are lost are the normal folks, are the poor folks, you know? And the people that lose their lives are the normal citizens. And they're not yeah. the rich, not the politically connected. Right. It's not. It's always going to be normal citizens, and that's what's a shame. That's why I'm friendly against war. But then, Jim, in World War II, you said a very on point, World War I, World War II. If we didn't join the war, we would be living in a Nazi Europe or a Japanese <laughs> imperial Asia. We'll all be slaves. So the, 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 we need to. Sometimes we need to. The irony of the U.S. and World War II in Europe is that we probably would not have uh, entered World War II in Europe because we were so concentrated after Pearl Harbor uh, to focus on the Pacific. But Hitler declared war on the United States. Uh, Sorry, attacking our yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, go, I mean, talk about overreach, um, but that that was one of his undoings. But, but anyway. you know, if Russia, Russia did contribute to the war effort. You know, Russia and us, we both, I mean, I wish it didn't happen that way, you know, because the Russian influence, Russians uh, fast advancing troops from the East did not come to converge on Germany, or if we got there first, Maybe USSR didn't happen. Maybe they could not back a red China. Maybe the world will be in a different place. Maybe if there's just one leader and everyone falls in line, maybe that'll be good for us. But we will never know because that's not what happened. Now we're split. For, we had Cold War for 50 years. And now we have this new power in the East. And we have Putin trying to hold on. Either way, Jim, 
your insights are always, always delightful. It's always not what is said in mainstream media. It's always the truth. It's, true. it's always the truth. It, it, we might not, I might not agree with you, but it's always on point, and there's a reason why I support it. Yeah. Well, well, good, Jimmy. Thank you. Let's see what the next week brings. I hope it ends soon. I do, too. I do, too. <laughs> Thank All you, right. Take the, care, uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Zelensky said yesterday in his speech to the U.S. Congress, Mr. Biden, you are the president. You are the leader of the United States. You are the leader of the world. Now be the leader of the peace. To be the leader of the world, you have to be, leader of the be peace. the leader. Absolutely. Of the peace. And many people uh, misunderstand how much of a challenge it is to lead in the peace. It's a big, big deal. But is, is President Biden going to sacrifice American lives? He's not. He no. said that from the beginning. No, I don't, I mean, I don't think so. I and think even, we're doing the bare minimum. Even I think we're doing the bare minimum, and I think we're doing much less than we could or should, and still stay within our lane. That's a. I, I can't. I can't think of. Uh, uh, maybe there's no. There's no. <laughs> nothing we do right now could be. It's too late anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's let's talk about that next week. Yes, sir. You take care, buddy. Jimmy, thank you. Bye-bye.